Hey there, I'm Michelle Spaziano with Get to Know Metro. Have you ever considered becoming a fireman? Have you ever wondered what it takes to become a fireman? Today I'm standing with Captain Scott Lively from the Nashville Fire Department who is in charge of the fire recruit training and he is going to be telling us all about just those questions. My first question I guess would be how does one become eligible to train and become a firefighter? Well first off, thank you guys for coming on out and hanging with us today in our training. Um, it's a, a, a very uh, in-depth process to become a fire recruit. First off, we compile through Metro HR, the fire department through Metro HR compiles a, a hiring eligibility list composed of uh, a physical agility, okay. uh, a, a written exam, and then also uh, an oral interview. Uh, we rank all those together and assign a value to that and create a hiring registry which we, we did with uh, over 4,000 this wow. last go around. We had over 4,100 uh, recruits test from 46 different states. And they came in, we compiled a registry, and then we hire off of that list, just depending on the needs of the city. So they have to pass all three tests in order to be eligible to get on the, in the training program? Absolutely. Uh, the, you have to pass the physical first. That's why we put it first. Mm -hmm. And then you have to pass the written second, and then if you make it to the next level, then you come in and you do an oral interview in front of a panel of uh, fire, fire department employees. Now, is there any way to prepare for the written test and the agility test if you're thinking about becoming a fireman? There's a whole industry out there geared towards being a firefighter, so there's ample uh, uh, material available online okay. to prepare for the written test, the physical test, YouTube, all those things. There's all uh, types of uh, tools out there to prepare you for it. How long does the training academy last? Depending on the level of training, it can last anywhere from 13 weeks, which is our fire training, all the way up to 26 weeks, which is the wow. uh, fire and the EMT. So uh, we'll have a class that started the 1st of January. They'll get out right about January 3rd. So about six months of their life belongs to the fire academy. So it starts in January and then they get out you, June? Uh, they'll get out Ju July 3rd. Oh, July 3rd. Okay, so uh, about six months. About six months. Different classes start at different times of the year. It just so happens that they started uh, about the 1st of January. So. And if they already have uh, EMT training or experience, it, it's the training academy's less? It's about it, half the time? It's about 13 weeks of fire training to get all the credentials that they have to have to uh, be a firefighter, about 13 weeks. Wow. Now, can somebody actually, if they pass all three tests and they make it on the, the training list and they start uh, the academy, can they actually fail the academy oh, Absolutely. And, uh, and wouldn't you expect that if someone cannot cut the cut the mustard, so to speak. Um, it's, a, it's a very rigorous program. It's challenging mentally and physically, and uh, sometimes you have uh, some recruits that, that, that can do it for whatever reason, so we do lose it a few occasionally. Is it mainly men? That train? That uh, make it on the recruiting list, or is there some women too? Oh, there's a, there's a, a, a lot of women on the list. We <laughs> usually have <laughs> We usually have 10 to 15 percent of a recruit class is female. Oh, so quite a few then. Well, I'm surprised. Uh, uh, quite a few. Quite Not a that few. I don't think that women can do it, but I just, you know, I would think it would be more of a man type of... Uh, I understand you have to lift a lot of, lot of stuff, equipment. Uh, I understand that the uniforms that you wear are quite heavy. Extremely heavy, probably upwards 40 to 50 pounds, and that's just with the uniform. Oh, wow. Listen, we're not even talking tools. Obviously, every every job has their tools, and we have ours. It just ours are a lot heavier than most everybody else's tools. So uh, you just to do the work is it 40 to 50 pounds just in their their gear, and then plus the tools. And some of our tools can weigh upwards of 50 more pounds. Now, what do you mean by tools? The hose. Hose. How heavy ladders, is the hose? The, the hose is various weights depending on how much hose you need, how much water you want to deliver. It can be anywhere from 30 pounds up to 130 pounds. Oh so, dear, so you really need to be in shape. Oh absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. How many people are in your training class today? We'll have 19 recruits today. Wow, that 19. seems like a lot. That's, uh, that's not a lot actually, that's a very manageable group. We've had uh, classes upwards of 35 on up to, to 70. So. 
Uh, 19 is a very manageable group. It allows the instructor-student ratio to, to be very comfortable to where we can get lots of hands-on and eyes-on training. Is there any females in this class? We have one. We have one oh, female. Oh, good. We have oh, one good. female. How's she doing? She's doing well. She's, She's keeping up with the men. Uh, absolutely. I she, love it. She's as tough as they are and more so <laughs> probably. So. Oh, uh, you guys really have the elements to deal with, <laughs> don't you? Can you give us a typical day in the life of a fire recruiter? Is That's it recruiter? Recruit. 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 Oh. Uh, a typical day generally starts about 6.45. We have a uh, flag raising ceremony, pledge of allegiance and formation. Then we'll have a, uh, uh, we have a PT program that's geared towards a job specific uh, uh, physical training uh, that'll last about an hour or so. Then uh, they'll get in uniform and then we'll start uh, a typical day uh, as far as training. We'll start at 8.30. Depending on the needs of the day and the curriculum that we're in, we might uh, we might have the classroom portion. Then we might be out on the grounds and uh, and, and doing evolutions out on the grounds. Or if uh, we have a busy, really busy day, we might go straight from PT into evolutions out on the grounds. So it just depends on the the, the chapter, the topic that we're in right then. So, so it's a long day. It's almost an eight-hour day, right? We'll all start at 6:45, and they'll generally get out about 4 30 every wow. day it could carry on we don't sit and watch the clock <laughs> we know that we've got training that we've got to get through and uh sometimes they have some late days but they know that ahead of time and they're good with it they they, they love it uh you mentioned evolution what does that mean evolution is a, a, a job specific task we just call it evolutions we have uh, being a firefighter is very is very choreographed. We have truck company operations, rescue operations, uh, suppression operations. So we we practice all those individually individually, say like a football team would do. And then on game day, we get together and it all comes together. Hopefully, if we practice and train enough, <laughs> it comes together in a in a, a symphony, so to speak. Everyone has a job. Everyone knows what to do. And that's why we can do what we do in a small amount of time. We train constantly. The guys in the field uh, train more than probably the public would ever even imagine. They train. We're there for 24 hours, and most of that time is training. Have you ever saved a life? Absolutely, I have. What's, obviously, that's probably one of the most rewarding things of, of being in this job. What, what's another rewarding thing that you've uh, experienced? Uh, just the job in general. I mean, uh, we're people call us when they don't know who else to call. Whether it's a <laughs> really? cat in a tree, the pipes bust, their house is on fire, or their grandmother's just falling. So they, the rewarding part to me is making their day better. Uh, they call us. They don't. They don't want to know who I am. They just want me to make it better. And so uh, that's re what's rewarding to me. I've delivered babies and saved people and all that, but just making every, everybody's day a little bit better, and, 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 and that's just the way we do things. How do you handle situations when you've done your best and there's nothing more you can do and maybe it didn't turn out the way you, know, you would have liked it to? It's tough. We're, we're all human beings. We train and we are, we're, we are kind of tough guys sometimes, but uh, it's tough. We're human and uh, everybody uh, deals with it differently and we have people that are uh, that are trained to help us uh, deal with those type of, of stressful situations afterwards and how to, to we have debriefings and uh, counseling and those type of things it's never easy right. especially when you're you're dealing with uh, small children it's never easy so it, it happens uh, you just uh, push through it and prepare for the next call Right. That those calls keep coming in. They don't stop. Right. And uh, you know, you get off work at six the next morning. There's somebody else waiting to take that next call. It's continuous. Well, I've always thought that you know, folks that are in your type of work or in your line of work are, are true heroes. And you know, along with our military, and we don't pay enough respect and think about what they do every day you know, for the, for the average person. I mean, you guys go out and risk your life day after day to save other people's lives, and that, that just amazes me. So you're one of my true heroes. Um, I want to ask you this. I don't know if this is too personal, but what is a typical salary for a starting, uh, you know, a fireman starting out? 
Uh, typical recruit salary is probably uh, 35 to 40, maybe 38-ish or something along those lines. So uh, uh, I probably not enough, yeah, I guess I would you would it say. Yeah, I think should be a little more to risk your life every uh, day. I don't, I don't want this to sound cliche, but uh, they don't, firefighters don't choose this line of work for the money. They, 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 have they, they, have, they have heart character, it's in their blood. Uh, there's just uh, something about making a bad situation better and I, I don't, they don't do it for the money, I can tell you. Well, real quick, I see that the, uh, the trainees are all coming. I'm getting very excited. I wanted to ask you about the house. Today you're gonna be burning down this house or smoking it up, tell us what you're doing. Today, this is a, it's a treat for us. Unfortunately, it wasn't a treat for the owner of the house. This is what they call an abatement home. The, the city purchased uh, flood houses. Uh, back when we had the flood a few years ago, the city had a purchase plan where they purchased houses. And so they were gracious enough to allow us to train on them. So what we'll do, we've done many of these. Uh, what we'll do with this one today, we won't be using live fire. Uh, for obvious reasons. They have neighbors around and those type of things. So we, we're gonna use theatrical smoke today, but we're gonna, with Hess House today, I talked about the evolutions earlier. Mm -hmm. We'll do um, uh, suppression, uh, an evolution where we'll, we'll go in just like we're putting out a fire, suppressing the fire, it just won't be real fire. We'll do a, a, a rescue evolutions where we're gonna hide a couple of victims and the, 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 the recruits have been trained uh, different patterns to use. They're gonna go practice those today. We okay. tried to blacken it out so they they go straight on training and then we're gonna do what we call truck company operations. We're gonna uh, ventilate by cut, cutting holes through the roof to simulate releasing uh, uh, hot gases out to uh, work with the firefighters inside the house to give them some relief. So. Now the smoke, is that real smoke or is that fake smoke? <laughs> this is this is what we call theatrical smoke. Theatrical smoke. It's, uh, we, we do a lot of it in training because we can smoke up an environment and train on it, then we can take a time out, turn it off, the smoke clears, and we can talk about what we saw. Oh, it allows okay. an instructor like myself to be in there and watch what's going on and not have the issue of the superheated gases. In a real fire, you're talking upwards of uh, a thousand degrees inside it's kind of hard to train on that so we can we can take a time out shut the smoke off and talk about it um this house you said that this was a house uh, that was a victim of the flood that we had this house uh, was flooded there's a creek right next to it it, it flooded and uh, it, it ruined everything inside so, so somebody's you know unfortunate uh, mishap can actually turn into something good. Absolutely. So. Well, there you have Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Well, uh, Captain Scott Lively, thank you so much for joining us. You've thank been you. very informative. We're excited to see all the trainees in action. Thank you, so. guys. I'm glad Stick to have around. you out today. Thanks. Thank you. Well, I'm lucky enough to be standing here with two of the recruits who are going to ask a few questions. This is uh, Recruit Matters, and this is Recruit Neely, and he is also the president of all the recruits, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So I want to start out with the, the young lady next to me, Recruit Matters. What made you decide to become a fireman? Um, you know, I just like helping people, and who's better at helping people than firemen? I mean, I've always been a part of a team environment, like. Uh, growing up with basketball, I played college uh, basketball, and you know, I seemed to excel in those types of things. And I, I love people. And was this more than was it harder than you expected? The the training and the agility and all the stuff that you're going through right now. It's not for the faint of heart. <laughs> did you pre-train before coming uh, to the academy? Oh yeah. Oh, I mean, I'm, I was a health coach prior, and I'm I pretty much stay try to work out often and. Uh, you know, not eat McDonald's too much, but yeah. <laughs> What's the hardest part of the training uh, so far? Um, I think being in the gear takes a toll more than you realize. You know, you do certain tasks and they're challenging, but after, you know, an hour or so being in the gear, you're like, I'm tired. And it's not because I just crawled through a culvert. It's because I've been lugging around 80 pounds of gear wow. nonstop. Even if you're just standing, it's, it takes a toll on your body. And um, is there anything that came to a surprise uh, to you, uh, maybe being a woman versus uh, the men in the academy? Um, I like them a lot more than I thought I would. <laughs> I love that answer. You're all right. 
Okay, and now here we're, uh, recruit Neely. Tell me, what made you decide to become a fireman? Was this been a lifelong dream it since has, you were little? Yes, and the brotherhood. Oh, the brotherhood, uh, okay. I mean, Jay would lay her life down uh -huh. for any one of us, so. Do you have family members that are also firemen? Retired, uh, so, from Metro, yes ma'am. Oh, okay, so you do. And what is the most challenging thing uh, that you've come across during the academy? The mental aspect. It's, uh, it's a thinking man's game. It's not just putting the wet stuff on the red stuff anymore. Did you get that? The wet stuff on, on the, the red stuff. stuff. So the water on the hot stuff. I understand that uh, it, it could be very stressful as, as far as, you know, the mental aspect of it. Has it been stressful for you? Yes, ma'am. It's, it's a lot of studying on top of physical. And like she said, being in the gear all day, going home and studying and preparing, and it, it wears on you. Captain Lively said you have to make quick decisions uh, in a split second. Have you found that challenging? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, you, you really do, because if you make the wrong decision, somebody's going to pay. Wow. You have a bad day here, it's bad. So you graduate um, in July, yeah. July 3rd, right? Yes, ma'am. What has been the most rewarding part of getting through the academy thus far? The brotherhood. The brotherhood. You took 20 complete strangers, and I mean, there's a sister right there. Mm -hmm. So. And I've talked to some of the other recruits, and you're going to like this. <laughs> One of them said, she's better than I am. <laughs> <laughs> so you definitely have the support of, uh, like you said, the brotherhood is, yeah. is going on here. Have you felt like um, you've gotten a new family? with? With the oh recruits? yeah, lots of lots of brothers. No pun intended. I mean, more than I ever thought I would have. I had two growing up. Now oh. I've got like you know, 17, 16. What does your family think of you doing this? Oh, they think <laughs> they think I'm a little bit crazy. I think, but they're excited. I mean, you know, very supportive. Well, they won't think you're crazy if someday you <laughs> save their life. Thank you so much for joining me. Congratulations on uh, becoming a fireman. <laughs> Thank you. I always enjoy teaching because I think um, the nature of firefighting is to make sure that we become better generation after generation. So my abilities uh, and my goal is to make them better than I am. And also teaching keeps me on top of my game as well. They have a lot of learning still to go. So we've seen a lot of improvement over the past couple weeks with them. We continue to work with them, and I think they're going to be a huge asset to our department. I think it's exciting to have uh, people that are hungry to learn and, and taking a curriculum and, and doing something positive with it so when these people get out in the field we're able to help the taxpayers that pay our salary and do it in a proficient manner. They start out with a little bit of knowledge. You can go ahead and help increase that knowledge. At the end of the program, it, it's wonderful the type of experience that you have with them. You get out in the companies, they're gonna be sitting beside you. You might help them do the academy. Once they get out, they might be the one that goes ahead and saves your life. I've always felt like our men in uniform 
are our true heroes. And I gotta say, after today, I have earned a whole new respect for our firemen. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Get to Know Metro. I'm Michelle Spaziano. Please join me every Saturday night right here only on Metro 3.